Heliophysics is the study of the sun, but not just the sun, the sun's influence on everything in the solar system, interacting with planets, with moons, asteroids, comets, even the spacecraft and people we have in the solar system. And the work we do here at Goddard is unique because we have the largest collection of heliophysicists in the world that cover the gambit of theory and modeling to answer fundamental questions, which then drive the development of instruments and missions and also address something that's crucial to our understanding and our society, space weather. Space weather effects can come in many ways, and it can be caused by different things. For example, solar flares, which are abrupt eruptions of radiation, or corona mass ejections, CMEs, which are big explosions of particles that travel several million miles per hour. These events also can actually accelerate high energetic particles to very high velocities. It could cause problems in the instrumentation and satellites, problems in communications, GPS signal loss, and even power grid disruptions. We depend too much on this kind of technology, and that's why we have to study, and it's critical for us to study the near space environment, the space weather, so we can understand how we can mitigate these events. Theory and modeling is very important to every Thing that we do in the Heliophysics Science Division to quantify what measurements are needed to distinguish between competing explanations of an outstanding question. It is important to know what to measure, where to measure, and to what accuracy to measure. This is the sort of information that theory and modeling efforts help provide. Then, armed with that information, instrument developers and mission PIs can design their instruments and operational approaches to ensure they will be successful. I work with the Community Coordinating Modeling Center. It's a multi-partnership agency established in 2000 that the core goals was to actually support the research in space weather and also to actually facilitate the development of the next generation of space weather models and tools. As a part of that, we do a service of monitoring and doing forecasting for NASA missions. And we do this in the way of having an in-house real-time prototyping of the new tools so we can prepare the models and the tools to operations. In order to understand solar energetic particles, we have to detect them in space. So to detect them, we need to use modern instrumentation and our instruments based on modern scintillators and modern readout devices. The way that scintillators work is that they actually produce a tiny amount of light as the particle traverses through the scintillator. Now the key is to be able to measure that light, that very small amount of light. What our lab has actually been doing is taking modern devices, these are silicon photomultipliers, and making large area arrays of them that can replace the bulky photomultiplier tubes of the past. So we can actually fly this type of miniaturized technology on small sats such as CubeSats. As a scientist, the dream is to have something really beautiful, really captivating that you can talk to people about, but you can actually get very detailed pieces of scientific information. The aurora is arguably the most visibly captivating manifestation of this relationship between the sun and the earth. What we do in our lab is we try and actually fly rockets that go through the aurora and above the aurora and then come down in a very short time frame so that you can capture the particles that are creating it over here and you can also have the opportunity to look at the light from below. And with those instruments, we have two goals. We want to know how many particles did we get, what energies were, were they at, and other properties, but these are the most important usually. Data drives theory and modeling, which then drives new instrumentation and missions, which ultimately brings us new data and starts that cycle of discovery all over again. The work that we do here in heliophysics is so important and has many broad implications both for planetary science in our own solar system and beyond to planets around other stars, so-called exoplanets. By understanding the extreme space weather that these close-in exoplanets are constantly encountering, we can understand whether these planets are in fact habitable and we can derive a better understanding of space weather and its impacts for our own planet and way of life.
One exciting aspect of what we do in the Heliophysics Science Division is in fact a fundamental goal of NASA to communicate the science and technology which we and our colleagues develop through science communication, science outreach, and science education. And we're embedded with the largest collection of space and earth scientists. This allows for a truly cross-disciplinary group that's not only addressing NASA's goals in heliophysics, but NASA's goal across all the science disciplines and supporting all the missions that NASA and its partners bring to the world.